how significant is that, uh, that they can make this dollar bond payment? And what does it tell you in terms of what it means for offshore investors? Well, it's certainly good news in the short term, and it shows that they're trying to minimize the damage on offshore investors. Uh, in, the, in the medium term, I still think we're likely to see some losses on the offshore bonds, but I do believe that uh, authorities in China will seek to minimize the damage on offshore creditors relative to onshore creditors for the reason that uh, post default, Chinese property developers still need access to that market. And offshore investors are not subject to the kind of strong arming to continue the flow of credit to developers that uh, onshore creditors will be subject to. So therefore, they need to be treated with a relatively light hand if they're going to keep funding these developers in that market. The other part to this, and you touched on uh, this already a little bit, uh, Gabriel, is that if they need the money, they can actually find a way to, to come up with the money, whether that's them or somebody else. Well, that's exactly right. The key thing to understand about what's happening both with Evergrande and, and uh, other ch Chinese developers is that this is not just the business cycle at work. This is a policy-induced slump in China's housing market. And that means that policymakers could reverse the slump anytime they want to. So far, they're choosing not to. And we saw that with the, the recent uh, credit data for September, where they're really holding the line on mortgages and on developer loans, even though the easy thing to do in the short term right now would be to reverse course, as they've done so many times in the past. But they're not ready to do that yet. Uh, and I don't think major easing is going to come until early next year. To your point on the policy exercise, you know, the big news over the weekend is, is, is China looking to expand now the, the, the property tax trials to several other areas of the country. I mean, it's a bit strange and odd, but doesn't that actually then uh, exude confidence that they are confident the system will hold up amidst all of these things that you already uh, outlined there for us? I think it does signal that. This is a very significant reform. This is a, an initiative that's been talked about, but where we've seen no significant progress for at least a decade. And we're finally seeing it's something move forward. Now, the devil is very much in the details about who will be taxed, what the scope of the tax is, which cities will be chosen, the tax rates. But this signals that they're willing to endure. It's the latest signal, and we've seen this all year, really, with whether it's the regulatory crackdown uh, on tech or other measures, we've seen that they're willing to endure short-term pain in order to to, uh, to uh, solve some of these structural problems. And so from that perspective, uh, I, I think it's positive, even, even though this is going to be very cautious. It could be 2026 before the tax is fully in place. Hmm. Yeah, so what does it tell you? They said you might have to wait five years, right, for, for maybe any kind of substantial nationwide property tax, Gabriel. Does that signal to you that maybe the government is not that determined to, to wean the economy off of real estate investment? And the, and the property sector overall? What does it tell you about the business model moving mm -hmm. forward? Or the, mo the growth strategy, the growth model, I should say? Well, as always with China economic reform, it's two steps forward, one step back, because there's so many stakeholders that stand to lose from this tax. That's why it's been stalled for so long. And we know there was a lot of wrangling behind the scenes about how, how big this was going to be to start out with. So, uh, you know, she is not all powerful. He can't just steamroll all opposition. But we're seeing him accomplish something here that previous leaders failed to do. And, uh, you know, we're going to see a nationwide property tax eventually is, is, is my forecast. We were talking about, you know, companies like Fantasia that actually had the cash to, to, to pay their, their creditors, but they decided to default anyways, which surprised the market overall. And, and we, we talked to our, our, our Bloomberg Opinion columnist, Julie Wren, about it. It's, it's like these property developers are lying flat. Uh, what, why do you think they're doing that? And in a way, what kind of repercussions would that have for the sector overall? Well, to a certain extent, there's a kind of game of chicken going on between developers and the government. So often we've in the past, we've seen the government kind of flinch at the last minute when distress really started to loom in the, in the property market. They, they eased up and they, they resumed the flow of credit. And th there's an attempt right now to deal with moral hazard. And I mean, to some extent, we could see these actions by Fantasia as, as an as a, a attempt to pressure the government to go, to go back to that old playbook. But uh, the, the judgment is that the, the economy can endure this. I mean, if you look at housing market, housing sales for the entire year are still pretty strong. Because it just started crashing over the summer. But on a 12-month rolling basis, they're still pretty strong. So the government is, uh, and the same with local government financing, it, it hasn't fallen off a cliff yet. And so the government feels like it can hold on long enough and that isolated defaults aren't going to cause 
a major contagion.